in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear people of God, welcome to our today's reflection. We shall be reflecting on the 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time, the year B of the Church. Our first reading shall come from the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 25 to 29. And our Psalms from Psalms 19, the response, the precepts of the Lord are right, they gladden the heart. Our second reading from the letter of St. James, chapter 5, verse 1 to 6. And our gospel from Mark, chapter 9, verse 38 to 43, then verse 45, and verse 47 to 48. Our theme of uh, reflection shall be, He that is not against us is with us, a call to inclusivity and tolerance. My dear people of God, I may ask, how do we respond to people who do good but are not from our group? People who do good but are not from our community or ethnic background, who are not from our country or political or religious affiliations. Do we become happy and thank the Lord for these people who do good, or we unconsciously become jealous and envious of them? The Spirit of God acts freely through any person and is not compelled to keep within any boundary, within any church or individual. Anybody can become a possessor of the Spirit of God, and therefore no single individual has a monopoly of this same Spirit. This is the situation that we are presented within the first reading from the book of Numbers and in the Gospel according to St. Mark. In those days, we read from the book of Numbers, the Lord took some spirit that was upon Moses and put it upon the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. They prophesied. The spirit also rested upon two men, that is, Elder and Medad. And so they prophesied in the camp. This was an abomination in the eyes of young men who, according to the customs and traditions, the role of prophecy was a task to be carried out by Moses alone. We are told that a young man had to run and report to Moses concerning these two men prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, asked Moses confidently to forbid them, but Moses asked him, Are you jealous for my sake? My dear people of God, in the Gospel according to St. Mark, a similar ordeal occurs. John is intolerant. He reports to Jesus that they, that is the disciples, have seen a man casting out demons in the name of Jesus. The disciples forbid him because he was not one of them. Interestingly, Jesus disapproves this action. He disapproves John's exclusivist view by commanding them not to forbid him. For he that is not against us is with us. Jesus commands tolerance and the spirit of inclusion. But James, in the second reading, can be used as an example to prove this point that there are many rich Christians, according to James, who are intolerant. They pile up riches. They aren't concerned about sharing their goods with the poor Lazarus at their doorstep. They exploit the poor. Instead of extending a helping hand, James adopts the voice of Amos and Isaiah to castigate this kind of intolerance. My dear people of God, Christ invites us today not to hinder the good works of those people whose intentions are inspired by the Spirit of God. Christ, like Moses, pleased for tolerance and collaborative ministry towards the betterment of the conditions of human life 
and the salvation of souls. Those in church authority and leadership do not possess the monopoly of the Spirit of God. They are invited, like Moses and Jesus, to listen to the entire people of God, who possess the Spirit of God received at baptism. The spirit of inclusion should enshrine our whole being if we want at all to talk about a working society, a working church, and a working nation. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.